Hi, this is Paul Solt from iPhone Dev TV, and I want to show you a tutorial on how to create reusable components that you can use in your app. So let me highlight the mouse here so you can see what I'm doing. And this is a, an app that I've been working on that allows me to interact with these numbers using gestures. So what I'm going to teach you is how to create a component like this that we can reuse four different times. So this is a, a reuse component that I'm loading from an XIB file. So over here on the right, we can see that I have these four squares. These four squares correlate to a special custom class. If I'm on this tab, you can see it. And that class is down here. So this is the reusable tile. It's got a label on this side and a label on this side, and I can update it. And then it's got attached code where I can control the gestures and, and work with that. So what we're gonna do is create our own version of something like that. So let's create a new Xcode project and get started. So the main, the main problem we have here is that it's not intuitive on how to get a embedded user interface to load. So we're trying to create a special UI view. When we do the UI view controllers, it's pretty straightforward, but for a UI view, it's actually a lot more work and other approaches use a lot more code, and I'm gonna show you an approach that uses less code. There's still some steps to set up, but I think it's more straightforward and easier to understand. So we'll call this custom XIB UI view, and then I'll hit next. And I'm gonna show you how to first load this up. This is gonna go in my projects folder on my desktop. We're gonna first do this using the XIB file. In the next video, I'll show you how to do it programmatically. And then I'll go into any concerns with auto layout when you're working with these. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna block out the user interface. So let's grab two UI views and just throw them on. We, we can probably just put one view and then resize it. So since everything's pinned to the top, we can just resize from the top. Sometimes when you resize and maybe they fixed this bug in Xcode, but depending on where I resize from, sometimes this view will actually shift the whole view around and, and move it like that, which is kind of weird. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna set it to a certain size. So let's build something similar to what I have and let's set up the sizing to be approximately the same. So if I'm gonna do that, it's gonna be 160 pixels or units wide, that would be points and then around 80 points high. Now you can't see it when I click off of it, so let's make sure that we update the color on this setting page from white to probably a grayish color so that it stands out and we can duplicate this and if we want, we can put them side by side. So to make them distinct, I'll just make this color slightly different so we could go for a black just to show some contrast to show that there are two items here. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new file and we're actually gonna create three different files, but we only need to create the UI view first. So we're gonna subclass from UI view. And actually for this, you might wanna subclass from UI control, depending on how you're gonna interact with this, that probably would make more sense, but I'm gonna to stick to UI view to start. So here, this is going to be our, we'll call it a slider view. And you can't create the XIB file all in one go like you can a UI view controller, which kind of stinks because that means that it's gonna be a lot more work on your part. So the next thing we need to do is create the interface file. And if we select interface from user interface under iOS, we can select view. Now, when we hit next, we hit next, we add it. Now we wanna make sure, now this dialogue looks a little different than the other one. So sometimes it catches me off guard. We wanna make sure we type in slider view here and make sure that it's added to our target and then hit create. So now we have an interface file. If we click off and click back onto it, we should be able to see it. Now we have to change the layout so that its size is a free form and we don't need a status bar. This is just going to be a resizable component. Now we can resize this using these edges and we're gonna go for 160 by 80 pixels tall. So that's gonna give us something that can fit in that blocked out area that we've created in this interface. Now what we will do is create two labels. And I think I wanna create just one label to start and we'll make this a hundred big. And I wanna add a button just to show you 
um, some user interaction with this beyond just uh, maybe a gesture. So we'll start with a number here. This is a value that we can increase. We can always play with the font here, make this around 40 big. That should look pretty good. And then we can make this so it's right aligned. Now we'll just have this this button here so that we can interact with it to show that user interaction is enabled. And one of the problems I have with a lot of code is some people do things and it sort of works for some of the cases, but it doesn't work for all of the cases. And making sure that your custom control can work for, for touch input is really important because otherwise down the road, you'll find that not everything is set up correctly. All right, with this, we now need to attach this slider view with our, our class file. And make sure that you do not do this step with the view selected. If you try to do the custom class here, you would be in for some trouble when we go to actually hook things up. So make sure you select the files owner here. This is going to be the, the class name right here. So we'll call this the slider view. Now, one of the downsides of this approach is that we have to make a connection between our code file and our .h file so that we have a reference to this view. So we're actually going to have our, our view loaded and we're gonna populate it by having a reference from files owners to this view. And so that means that we can drag from this view to insert an outlet here. And we'll just call this view. So the view itself is gonna have a view property. And the only reason we're doing this is because we wanna load that at runtime. Now you could also throw in a, a property to access the outlet for the label. So we could just put in a label. And if we wanted to, we could throw in an action for our button pressed. And make sure that you switch this to action. And I guess this is more of a switch. So we'll just call it a switch. All right, so with that, we have the beginning steps and we can now jump over to our main storyboard. And this is where you'll run into problems. When you try to just set this as the class name to slider view, and this one to slider view, you would expect not to see those colors, but to see the little user interface that we have developed and it does not work. So now what we have to do is we have to get this to unarchive properly and actually load up the interface file that we want for it. And so in this, we're gonna need to make sure that we actually implement a new method, not the init with frame, we need to do in it with coder, which is called when we unarchive something. So the problem is that this does not call the view code properly. Now it's important that we do in it with coder because this class will actually, uh, it's super class actually implements it. That's not the case if you subclass from something like NS object, but since we're subclassing from UI view, it can unarchive itself and it's important to set this up. Otherwise the sizing information will not be pulled in from our XIB file. However, this is not enough to get things working. So we're gonna actually have to manually request it to reload the XIB file for the slider view. And so the way we do that is we use the NS bundle, main bundle. And with this, we can say load a nib name. So this is how we can load an interface file. And here, all I'm gonna write is slider view like we have with the file name on the left side. So you wanna make sure that um, slider view, this name is what we type in here without the XIB extension. Next, we'll do nil or self for the owner. I don't know if that really makes a difference right now. And we're not gonna do anything with this value. What this actually does is it will load up our XIB file. And because we have a connection from our files owner to our view here, that view outlet will be populated. And we can take advantage of that and actually throw that view onto our interface files thing. So there's really two steps that you have to do here. This is our first step. We wanna load the interface file from an XIB, which is our custom interface. And, and then we want to actually add it as a sub view. And this can work with auto layout because we'll use the 
the bounds that are set with the XIB file. So you want to make sure that whatever's in your main.storyboard that you're trying to load is going to work. So we're in our slider view. Now this is a UI view, so we're just going to say self add sub view and we're going to add self dot view. So this is going to look a little bit strange if you're used to working with a UI view controller um, because our, our root object here that we're in is a UI view and we're adding another view, but this is the view that we've designed right here. Now, if everything goes okay, then we should have our view and, and we see it right here. So we can't interact with that, but we can interact with this button and that's important to make sure that things are working. So that's how to load from in it with Coder. If you want to do it programmatically, we're going to have to do some work up here to make sure that things get loaded. And we actually need to set the frame when we're working in this, this area rather than right here. So the frame is automatically set for us. Make sure you don't set the frame here or you can have some unexpected uh, results and I've played around with a lot of different configurations. So that is how to create a custom UI view. And this allows you to add background images so you can throw in a UI image view behind this whole area. So if you just plop this down, we can just resize it. And this allows you the ability to really skin your interface files. So let's make this pop out. And all we'd want to do is move our view behind everything. And if we do that, then we can throw in a image. So I could create something in Photoshop. It could just be uh, some kind of image and we could just skin the whole app to make it look a lot cleaner. Just to, to show you that this image view is behind everything, let's just set the background color to a green and see what happens. All right, so now you can see that I have an image view behind that is coloring the image um, background, but right now it doesn't have an image loaded. So that's something that your artist can give you and then you can just throw it right in. All right, so if you want to learn how to do this programmatically, check out the next video where I will show you how to set it up. And then in the, the videos after that, I'll go into actually using this a little bit more and any concerns that you might have when you're working with auto layout.